the last lecture what we saw was the work done by uh, variable force and what's that the last lecture we discussed about the work done by variable force right yes and in that we studied uh, some path dependent problem and then work done by spring correct yes i think that was the last topic that we discussed the various condition in which the spring works yes. okay. and uh, then we discussed about uh, work done by gravity and i said that gravity work only depends on the vertical displacement and with that i think uh, we ended the lecture right that was the last one yes. so today we are going to start uh, something called uh, energy part so the work done by various cases we have seen and now we can start the energy So the question is what is and what do you mean by energy so what do you mean by energy so so far we have been talking about work and work and work so capacity for doing energy capacity for doing in our work correct so energy is the capacity to do work which means work is secondary the primary is energy you can only do as much as you have energy so doing work demands energy and therefore there must be some source of energy <coughs> so every work is accomplished with the some supply of energy and therefore when we say that someone is doing some work uh, let's call it positive work then someone must be having some source of energy the source of energy may be a very natural source or maybe some man made source it could be anything so for example when you try to drive a car or ride a bike or in fact when you try to walk now there is a constant energy supply which is demanded and in the due process when the energy is demanded you have to supply then only work is possible so when you walk then that energy comes differently from the energy which your body has stored in form of metabolic reactions so human body is the source of energy itself so we are a tremendous source of energy and our energy is actually stored at a cellular level you can say the mitochondria stores energy and all this energy is produced by some metabolic reaction so the food which we eat is decomposed by the catalyst and that produces energy So our work is again derived from some, you can say, chemical reactions happening inside the body. In case of vehicle, whether it's a bike or car, we have a fuel system which burns and produces energy. <clears throat> In Tesla car, the lithium-ion battery produces energy. In various other cases, we have solar energy. like the international space station it is stores energy from the like solar radiation so the constant requirement of energy should be met by some means and without that uh, means we cannot talk about work so work is done as much as the energy is available you cannot go beyond energy and do some work so if you if you want to do let's say 100 joule of work then you must have somewhere in register minimum 100 and up to anywhere <clears throat> so 
that is the idea behind the energy. So let me put it from only. Now we need to categorize it. So in how many categories we put this in it? So we have two categories of energy. Now, so there are certain energy which can be exchanged. So there are certain form of energy which can be exchanged by doing work. Because doing work itself is the energy flow process. So as I said in the very beginning, work is a way to exchange energy. So you take energy from one and you give to the other. So that's the, what we mean by work. So work was the method to exchange of energy. So now if the energy can be exchanged with the help of the concept of work, we call it mechanical. But if the energy transferred or exchange demands some other mechanism other than the work, we call it non-mechanical. So the non-mechanical means that the mode of exchange, the mode in which or by which we exchange the energy does not even, I mean, involve work or any force and displacement kind of thing. Mechanical says that, no, if you exchange energy in terms of work, then this must be mechanical and then mechanical is further divided into two categories so for mechanical we have two separate section <coughs> and one is called kinetic energy and other we call potential energy so both are related to work. So mechanical is a alternating way of talking about work actually. So we know that kinetic energy and potential both are eventually related to work actually. So there you can say independent existence is just for the sake of learning purpose, but in nature, there's nothing like potential. Potential is just a, imagination that we create. So I'll discuss more about it, what is potential. Now the kinetic energy we can further divide. Into various categories. So we may define kinetic energy for particle, we may define kinetic energy for body, we may define kinetic energy for like molecular level, something much deeper. So at the macro world, we have only two types of kinetic energy. We call kinetic energy of translation and the formula we write is half mv square. It's called vcm square, the center mass velocity. Now for any particle, the center mass is the particle itself. So we preferably only write half mv square. We don't write vcm kind of thing. So later on, we will learn about something called kinetic energy of rotation, which is basically due to the spinning of objects, like Earth is spinning about its own axis. So the kinetic energy, which is associated with the spinning of object or uh, rotation of object, we call Ke rotational. And uh, the formula is somewhat a very new for you. So we talk about something called moment of inertia. 
and now these things are uh, the macro okay these are macro but as a classification we should know one more name and that will help you in the chapter of uh, kinetic theory of gases and it is called kinetic energy of vibration or uh, you can say oscillation now the vibration or oscillation uh, can also be attributed to the translation but a vibration always involves a minimum two object or more than two object so at a microscopic level when a molecule will have atoms attached to each other so they also vibrate so let's say we have h2o molecule and h atoms and o atoms are kind of oscillating locally so the local movement of these uh, atoms is attributed to the kinetic energy of vibration but uh, the vibration will never say that the molecule is moving as a whole so molecule is essentially there it is just vibrating so it is just like a, if you have seen the some spring toy so you just push it and release it will keep on oscillating but the toy as a whole is not moving anywhere so when the motion is localized when the motion is localized and uh, there is no significant displacement from its mean position so such motion we call vibratory motion or oscillation and the energy that we describe in such cases called kinetic energy of vibration so now for particle we only use the formula half mv so now for vibration there is no formula as such but you will learn in kinetic theory of gases that how the energy is uh, link with the temperature and as the temperature will grow then the kinetic energy of vibration of molecule will grow and that is why that when you raise the temperature beyond certain value the amplitude of oscillation becomes so high that eventually they break so the atoms let's say 2o atom o2 so when you raise the temperature the o2 will vibrate because o2 will act as a spring block system and because of the very high degree of vibration energy so when the vibration energy grows beyond certain limit the bonds breaks and what we get is called free radical so that idea of free radical will help you in uh, organic chemistry when you will learn the ozonolysis or ozonization so the idea is uh, again uh, energy only so we have something called peroxides and when the photon hits the peroxide the energy contained in the photon is sufficient to break into free radicals and that's how the reaction undergoes so the vibrational kinetic energy is very crucial in chemistry and uh, statistical physics in this particular chapter we'll definitely not talk about uh, vibration part what we talk about is a very the basic one called the translation and uh, we end up writing the half and we's for that so because we are learning called uh, particle dynamics we talk about particles we don't talk about bodies and one point cannot have a, a different uh, one point cannot have a rotation kind of thing so the only thing which is possible is called translation and therefore the only one energy associated is called the translation kinetic energy which we write as half and we's for Sir, what are the rotation under that K rotation? Half. Half. I C M omega square. So this is called moment of inertia. So that uh, I might have introduced the concept of uh, moment of inertia in the maybe in the very beginning chapters or. vectors and all so nevertheless this is not i mean you are going to learn in detail in chapter of rotational dynamics so no need to worry about it so this is just this is just for the sake of completeness i mentioned here else it is not required
So now what you're learning right now, the present chapter is a, a small part of the big chapter that you're going to see soon. And uh, what you are going to see soon is called the rotational dynamics. So this idea is very important that the kinetic energy is not just half a V square, which is that is something which we have taken for granted. But uh, rather we have some other uh, types of kinetic energy as well. So we call it translational, rotational and vibrational. And for vibrational, the formula we will study in the chapter of KTG called the kinetic theory of gases. And KT is KTG is something which is essentially taken by your chemistry sir. So you will learn in great detail. Now coming to the potential. Now, as I said, potential is, uh, there is nothing like potential to be very honest. It's just like you gave some money to your friend and it's a long time, uh, both of you have forgotten that uh, you gave money to your friend and he has taken money from you. So in essence, your money is lost, but in a way it is not lost because once you remember, once both come to the conclusion that yes, you had given something and he has taken something, then that money is potentially can be recovered. So potential energy is like uh, again a work by someone, but uh, we don't want to name his name. I mean, uh, the guy who has done this work. So, for example, the money that uh, maybe Akash money is spending is not uh, the money he has earned, but rather his dad has earned. So, in a way, the work done by his dad is the the potential of Akash money that he can spend that money. So, it is like stored money. So when you when you spend some money which is already stored somewhere, it means someone must have done some work in the past, and the potential is a way to recall the past. The idea is this is how we talk about the past, or uh, this is the idea how we talk about the the energy which we which seemingly is lost but not lost. So imagine that say uh, you are wearing a jacket in which there are infinite number of pockets. So now you have a jacket with uh, arbitrarily infinite number of pockets. And I, if I give you some money, let's say I give you a hundred rupee note. And what you do is you just put that hundred rupee note uh, in random some pocket. I mean, I don't know which pocket. So now if I tell you, give me to give it back to me, it's difficult because you don't know where it is. But the one thing we know is that it is with you only. So maybe if I turn the jacket upside down and may I, if I give a jerk, then it may fall down. So having the idea that the money is with you is same as calling the potential. But the potential itself is something which is given by somebody. So now the nature has given everyone some energy, which we'll talk about later on, what is that? Anyway. So I will come to potential in detail because this is going to be the biggest topic of our discussion called potential energy. And why potential is so important? Because uh, generally every student will learn the formula of potential. That's the biggest problem. Now potential you're going to face in chapters like electrostatics. Potential will face in chapters like uh, uh, gravitation. And potential... Uh, we face in chapter like of, is of course this chapter is spring force potential we face in the chapter like elasticity potential we face like in chapter of collision so potential is not having only one particular chapter to learn actually so it is having application in a wide variety of topics potential is also defined in oscillation so what I will do is I will try to give you a very generalized way of thinking about potential beat any chapter. So the idea or the thinking should be independent of the chapter taken into consideration. So no matter which chapter you're dealing with, I mean, the potential definition will never change. And now if you can reproduce the formula out of your uh, thinking, then probably you will never face any difficulty in solving any problem of uh, electrostatics as well. So the potential is very crucial uh, thinking uh, strategy. We'll develop this strategy slowly. So now the potential is a part of uh, mechanical energy and uh, you can 
name it uh, the way you want. So we call it uh, elastic potential energy. Now the elastic potential energy is the most uh, common type of potential energy, which is basically due to the the restoring ability of a body. So whenever there is a restoring ability, if you know that if we have two atoms uh, and if the atoms are at equilibrium separation, which we call bond length in chemistry, if you try to pull it away from that separation, the attractive force will become dominant and will bring it back. And uh, if you try to compress the atom beyond that uh, bond length, if you try to bring it closer, the repulsion of the nuclei will come into picture and it will again push it back. So the equilibrium separation between the atom, when they form molecule, we call it bond length. So there is nothing as such. You can go and check a, a, some stick is present. No, there is nothing like that. So bond length is a concept and it has to do with the potential energy. That's why you define something called bond energy in chemistry. So what you, when you talk about the bond energy in chemistry, you're talking about the potential energy. In this case. So now when you break, an, uh, break a molecule into its uh, constituent atoms, okay, so eventually what you do is you overcome the potential barrier. And what is that basically? So when, as I said, when you try to bring it apart, the attractive force will become very much dominant. So you have to do the work against that attractive force to make them or to separate them. Now that work done by the, against the attractive force in taking the atoms away from each other, from the molecule configuration, is the bond energy. So the, if you supply that much energy, it will break. Okay. Now the potential energy is equally important in the during the phase change of uh, matter so for matter we define the phase change like the, from solid to liquid and liquid to gas and we define something called the latent heat so again the potential energy is the important concept there also so when you talk about the latent heat in uh, physics in calorimetry so what you talk about is that uh, the amount of energy which undergoes in changing the internal configuration of molecule is called latent heat. What does it mean? So you have a solid object, you supply heat and it becomes liquid. So let's say we have ice at zero degrees Celsius. So the ice itself is having a configuration. So what you know about ice is that it's a uh, H2O molecules in some very uh, unique fashion arranged and there is a bond which exists between them called the H bond. Hydrogen bond is named something called H bonding, which we represent by the triple dots. So in the ice flex, uh, this bond structure is very important and what we don't realize that when you, when you try to melt the ice, so what you do is you first of all break all these bonds. So basically breaking the bond is basically like taking the atoms away or the water molecule away from the other water molecule. So H bond is something like the attraction between the molecules. Okay. So when you try to break it apart, you need to do some work. And this work we when we don't do work, we need to do some I mean, energy supply basically. Now this energy supply we do in terms of heat transfer. Okay, so we'll also learn about there are two famous ways of energy exchange between system and surrounding. One is called the work transfer, which is the crucial part of thermodynamics. And of course, the other is called the heat transfer, which is again the crucial part of thermodynamics. And that's why the energy exchange take place in these two fashions. And that is why when you try to solve the question of uh, thermodynamics in which you write dq equals to du plus dw, the dw is called the work transfer and dq is called the heat transfer. And the net change of these two is called the, the internal energy exchange or uh, change in internal energy we call du. So du is basically the difference of these two, the heat transfer and the work transfer. So now those things you will learn in chapter of uh, thermodynamics, again, heat and thermodynamics is chapter. 
So you can see the potential is not going to leave you. I mean, put, unless you will not actually try to understand potential, you're going to face a lot of difficulty in throughout physics. And the problem is like in name of potential, the only thing that you should remember is called MGH. That's the problem. Now that's one formula. And the formula itself is not very much clear what it represents. We'll discuss about it in detail. And we'll derive the formula of MGH uh, almost by writing uh, one or two page of equation, which you have been writing so easily. I will derive it by very lengthy technique. What is MGH? So now the elastic potential energy is a very crucial kind of concept uh, and it is not only in uh, spring, rather it is associated with anything which is having the restoring capability. So anything which can restore itself, like you deform and it goes back to its original position, that's called restoring. So you play a, there's a game of uh, badminton, you have a racket uh, with net, you hit the shuttle and the net gets deformed, but it comes back to the original shape. Now, again, there is a concept of potential stored in the net, actually. So you, in childhood, you, you might have played with the bow and arrow and uh, we used to make a bow and uh, with a simple a piece of bamboo stick and uh, putting the rope over the bamboo stick and then pulling it back and you know hitting the arrow. Now again, when you pull it back, what you do is you create a deformation in the rope and then again, you store the potential. And when you release the bow, then the string goes back to the original dimension and all the stored energy is giving back to the arrow. And that's how the arrow shoots up. Now again, there's a potential. Okay. So you take any sponge, you compress it, you store some energy and you release it, it goes back to the same force. So potential is uh, playing a role everywhere. I mean, just like whether you realize it or not. Okay. So everywhere we are facing the you know potential part, I mean, the deformation, recovery. So anything which can deform by the application of force and recover back once you remove the force, we call elastic. Now elastic is not only associated with the spring. Spring is of course one of the very famous generalization of this concept. But even though objects without a shape like a spring can also have the potential energy of uh, elastic potential energy in nature. So even if you deform a metallic wire, if you deform a metallic wire, it stores potential energy. When you compress an iron rod, you store potential energy. When you bend an iron rod, you store potential energy. And now if you remember that in uh, small cities, I mean, Mostly we have a roof. I mean, of course, in Mumbai, you cannot see that. And when they create a building, they finish the I mean, ground floor and they leave some, you know, the hanging or you can say extended rod. And you go to the like rooftop and you can just pull the rod. We used to pull the rod and you used to play with the vibration. And I never realized that uh, vibrating those rods will lead to the concept of standing way in class 12. So, a very simple childhood experience turns out to be a very beautiful concept of physics. It was difficult to imagine at that time. So every vibrating object itself stores uh, potential also. So potential is not confined to one chapter. I mean, the idea is unless you will not, uh, you know, broaden your horizon of thinking, you're going to face a difficulty in other chapters. So elastic potential energy is, of course, an energy which is somewhat related to the deformation and restoring ability of bodies. Now, it could be in any form. Now, you, that is something which you need to actually learn and understand that what are the possible form in which I should be able to see the potential. The other potential energy, which is equally known to you, is called gravitational potential. Now, the gravitational potential is uh, essentially the energy which is uh, linked with the, again, the attractive force between the masses. Okay, so mass is, uh, mass is something which creates a field which we call gravitational field. And uh, the interaction between the objects by virtue of their gravitational field is called uh, uh, gravitational potential energy. Okay. 
so gravitational potential is somewhat related to the masses that's it you can think about and the third which is equally famous is called the uh, electrostatic potential now this is a, a separate chapter of 12 which you will learn but whether you learning the first or the second or the third the basic remains same for all all are defined in a similar fashion so there is no exclusive definition for other like if you go to different chapter it's not like something new thing will come uh, for you for the chapter okay? there is no nothing new for this be it any chapter the potential remains the same in terms of definition nothing changes so now the idea is uh, electrostatic potential energy is actually linked with the charges so in nature we have only two fundamental property i mean two fundamental quantities are there in nature the first fundamental is called mass which defines gravitational potential the second is called charge which defines electrostatic and and the elastic so in this chapter how to relate this so you are going to deal with the first two in this chapter the electrostatics will be a separate chapter of class 12 and the same idea will be carry forward there also so nothing new you are going to learn there and the fact is that 12th class is nothing means just a, a basic application of what we learn in class 11 so the entire 12th uh, you can summarize in maybe uh, two or three pages now for you it may be very surprising to know that even a chapter like current and electricity we can solve using the newton's laws of motion now that's beyond your imagination the chapter like electromagnetic induction we can solve using the concept of uh, work energy power chapter of alternating current we can solve using the concept of vectors chapter of magnetism is uh, essentially the newton's laws of motion we, what we use is the concept of circular motion and the electrostatics is just like the chapter of gravitation which we are going to study here so for you it may be a chapter I mean, once you start learning the concept of physics these are not chapter these are called concepts and therefore if you read any foreign authors i mean mostly i am talking about russians i don't quote americans there but i interesting that so the most of the russians author what they do is they create science books in a conceptual manner and that's why they have written an entire book of physics 11th and 12th in uh, hardly 200 pages or less so the books by russians are the smallest books the thinnest possible book you can find in uh, shelf of library of any book so potential energy is uh, having three variety and of course now comes uh, coming to the non mechanical which is very common like you know the you can say sound energy you scream and you convert your energy into sound energy now sound is a physiological phenomena basically when we say sound basically what we say is like you throw out a a gush of air out of your mouth from your stomach by pressing your stomach or by uh, contracting your lungs it depends on how you speak so those who are called ventriloquist what they do is to throw the air from the stomach so they compress the stomach so if you want to speak loudly i mean with lots i mean high you can say intensity like uh, if you are a uh, some politician and giving some speech you need to speak from the stomach we call ventriloquist sound is basically throwing out air and eventually sound is like you throw on throwing out air with uh, at a high velocity so it's like a tremendous kinetic energy imparted to the air molecules and uh, that's we call sound energy because that energy when hits the ear drum creates the vibration of ear drum and that vibration eventually lead to the creation of a uh, uh electrical pulse inside and that pulse travels through the optic nerve reaches the part of brain and the brain decodes as a sound I and mean, that's something which is happening within you so what i am saying and what you are listening is only within our mind so there is nothing outside now that's 
something you cannot understand that there is a complete silence outside all noise is in your brain so there is nothing between you and me so it is the ability of the human to understand this sound thing now if you are well aware of the fact that the dogs having a very poor threshold of listening actually so during diwali the sound which you create through the firecrackers it creates tremendous pain to them and that's why the god has given them the long ears they actually act as a flap so they close their ears so they have the ability to close their ears and almost all animals have the long ears unlike the humans we have open ears they have closed ears So anyway, God is trying to maintain or bring some equilibrium in certain way. So we have non-mechanical, you can say sound, uh, solar energy, or you can say light energy. Light. Okay. And we, are, of course, the very famous one, heat energy. So at the microscopic level, eventually. even heat energy is the mechanical energy but we will not actually classify in terms of microscopic description a potential energy is a concept which is always macroscopic in nature that we try to define okay so the heat energy at atomic level or molecular level is essentially kinetic energy at microscopic level we have a separate name so we call it heat energy okay so now you can understand the potential is such a tremendous thing to deal with so we'll come to the potential part in detail after a while so let's do the kinetic part first and probably i have tried to give you an overview of potential like where you should think about potential and i hope you have just realized that it is just everywhere i mean there is no place which is without potential So coming back to the kinetic energy, so what is kinetic energy? So we say that it is the energy possessed by any body by virtue of its motion. That's it. That's only definition. It is the energy possessed by any body. by virtue of its motion so now the question is why we call virtue of motion so let's create something called uh, this is like a, a medium you can call it a resistive medium the left side is there's a vacuum without a medium the right side is a medium so we have some medium here so have you ever derived the formula of kinetic energy half of this one anyone yes yeah. so if you derive the formula of kinetic energy from class 9th experience is very easy so imagine this is the ball And try to understand why we call half moon square as pan, and it is moving with velocity. Mm -hmm. So right now it is moving with inertia, and the vacuum will offer no resistance. There is no medium av uh, available. So the inertia will keep let you keep on moving forever. Now you enter a medium, and the moment you enter. the medium will start resisting so now there is a drag acting on the ball and because of this drag force the ball will eventually come to rest let's call it the displacement as s And let's call the drag force acting as F R. This is the resistive force F R. 
assuming that the drag force is constant for simplicity what kind of work will be done by the fr the resistive force positive work or negative work so negative work negative work so let's say you have some energy which i call call it kinetic energy and now the work done against this is fr into s this is the work done by the resistive force and that much energy is actually taken away and what you are left with is nothing now this is a basically work in sure so the kinetic energy is there and then work is there and then this is zero so the kinetic energy you can say equals to f r into s and now we can write the the third kinematical equation easily because it's constant force constant acceleration so we know that it is v equals to uh, u square plus 2s but v is zero here but u is v here and uh, probably a will be the, the retardation you can write minus 2 and uh, acceleration can write as force upon mass so if you solve this equation what you get is the fr is is m v over and that's why this is equal to now the idea is like if you were moving okay let's think about the idea only so when you were moving you had some energy which we don't know what was the formula so but you had some energy which we call for uh, kinetic energy and the medium actually taken away the energy to bring you at rest and now we realize that the energy taken by the medium was half m square so now we can say that the energy possessed by the body while in motion must be half m square because i cannot take energy more than what you have and so if i have taken all energy to bring you to at rest it means actually you had only this much energy in the very beginning and that we call kinetic energy i mean of course you can derive in other ways so the best way way to derive is called the work energy theorem okay. we say that dw is dk and uh, the work you can write is f ds and f you can write as m a ds and a we can write as v dv by ds and therefore the dk turns out to be m v dv and if you integrate you get kinetic energy equals to half i'm just taking 0 to k and like 0 to v so now you can see this is another way of deriving this is actually a, a way we we prefer now this is the how we derive for class 9 this one so now the kinetic energy is half mv square basically anything which is in motion anything which is in motion will have kinetic energy that is what we have to believe and the formula is half mv square but this formula is only for particles point masses for bodies the kinetic energy will have a uh, variety of parts in the way translational and rotational okay so of course those things you will see translational rotational in the chapter of the rotational dynamics so now the relation that we are actually particularly interested in is called the relationship of kinetic energy and momentum so momentum is a word which we know it's a product of mass and velocity and because we are taking from more the magnitude part so we can start mv although it's a vector quantity and the kinetic energy we write as a half mv square so anything which is having momentum means it is in motion 
and anything in motion must have kinetic energy so the momentum and kinetic energy are always related so that's like obvious thing so you can write this half mv square and you can further write as m is by v square by 2 which is p square by so the kinetic energy relation with momentum is obvious and it should be because both relates to the motion and everything in motion must have been energy so the kinetic energy you can also the momentum you can also write in terms of ke you can write in K. now if you remember this is a very famous formula of uh, de broglie wavelength right yes the so planck's constant upon p which you write is and this is basically the wavelength associated with the matter we call matter waves and it's called de broglie wavelength of course these are french people de broglie okay. just like how we use the the she in to add respect maybe something so in different cultures different so the another momentum and kinetic energy relation is very obvious so typically you can be asked question like very simple question like this if what we can relate that uh, if you change the momentum then how much kinetic energy will change so let's say i want to find the percentage change in kinetic energy and i know the change in momentum part so i can write delta k by k is uh k is what p square so p square by 2m minus p initial square by 2m upon p initial square by 2m that's how we write right into 100 that's called the percentage change and uh, if you you can cancel out 2m you will get p final upon p initial four square minus one and hold it down. Now the solution says that if you change the momentum, the kinetic energy will change. I mean, simple. So let's say if I ask you what will happen if I change the momentum by 10%, what will the percentage change in the kinetic energy? The question is simple. I am changing the momentum by 10%. Basically, I'm increasing it. So what will be the percentage change in the kinetic energy? Tell me. What happened? So P finally is 1.1 of P initial. That's it. 10% more, right? So if we add 10% to P initial, the P finally is this much. So the P final upon P initial is 11 by 10, you can add like this. And then just substitute, you'll get the answer. So 121 by 100 minus 1 into 100, which will give you 21%. So if you make the increment by 10% in, I mean, in momentum, your kinetic energy will change by only 21%. Now, similarly, you may be asked to so the that like is this. P, one square by two in the momentum. Pardon? Say that is P1 square upon P1 in the momentum. That is P final upon P initial whole square. So no left side. I mean, before. Yeah, P square by 2M. Here. So that P final square upon 2M minus P initial square by 2M divided by 2. No, which side you're talking about? You're saying here? No, um, then. Yeah. So that. Means, yeah, yeah so it's P final. Yeah, P final square by 2M minus P initial square by 2M upon P initial square by 2M. Like how you find the change? Change means final minus initial upon initial. Okay. Yeah. yeah. If you remember the high school mathematics, the profit percentage profit is 
like selling price minus uh, buying price upon buying price into 100 something like that and so is the loss now what is the correlation with the percentage change in momentum in terms of kind of kind so it turns out to be something like this it's k final by k initial minus one into 100 why because here the formula is uh, reverse it's under root k so if i want to find the percentage change in uh, momentum i have to write the formula under root 2 mk in terms of and then you can get this answer so you may be asked question like this if the kinetic energy is changed by 44 percent then what is the change in momentum so if i increase the kinetic energy by 44 percent then what is the increment in the momentum tell me Tell me. If I increase the kinetic energy by 44%, then what will be the percentage change in the momentum? That's the question. Understood. Twenty percent. Pardon? Twenty percent. Yeah. So the answer is simply twenty percent. So now you should be able to do this calculation easily. So now, in case anyone having doubt in this, please do ask, and I'm going to the name move to the next topic. So is this concept clear to all of you? Yes. Yes. Okay. So now we are good to go with the, the potential part, right? Now this is going to be a very biggest I mean, discussion. Maybe it will span the entire lecture for today. And you see, I'm not going to teach you again and again this concept uh, for other chapters. So my idea is I'm going to take care of the potential thoroughly here. Now. And in other chapter, I will just derive the formula very quickly without discussing further. So first of all, what is potential energy? Tell me, what is potential energy? Sir, ability to store. Pardon? Ability, Sir, to, ability store. to store. Um, so, how much Mukesh Amani can you know, collect money is the potential, right? You mean to say in that way. All right. So anybody else would like to say something about potential? No. All right, so I'll tell you. First of all, potential when we define. So let's have a very clear cut understanding when we should define potential and when we should not. So the first and foremost thing, potential we define when we have a system which is interactive. Now, what does it mean? To define potential energy, we must have a system first of all. A single point mass cannot have potential concept. So at least we need to have two point mass. So a body is a collection of particles. So we can say body can have potential, but 
individual particle cannot define potential so potential is defined as a only for system in which there is some natural interaction and the interaction means either attraction or repulsion okay so both are called interaction so we know from the newton's law of gravitation that the two masses interact they attract each other so this is the interaction and so the potential is logical choice from the coulomb's law we will come to know the two charges repel as well as attract so again there is a interaction so there is a potential so in atoms i mean in case of uh, a spring you can say there is a interaction at uh, atomic level there is again potential so what kind of interaction so we have a some uh, regular pattern of atomic arrangements and by deforming you deform or change that arrangement which results in some restring force development and we call it potential so if you look carefully potential is all about uh, interaction between the parts of system so for isolated point particle isolated point charge isolated anything isolated which is point we cannot define potential potential is a kind of bonding and bonding cannot happen with one person like i cannot bond with myself so i may be narcissist but i cannot bond with myself so i need to have someone to bond so potential is a concept of system so potential we define for a system for some collective you know or you can say configuration so what exactly is potential it's again a very, very difficult question to actually answer but we say that it is the energy possessed by any system by virtue of its configuration so let me put the definition first it is the energy possessed and the spelling may be incorrect in this check energy possessed p o i think this is the spelling right? so it is the energy maybe you can just check double s double s is confusing for me by any system now you can see that system what has come into this definition so it is the energy possessed by any system by virtue of its configuration is called potential energy of system so for any isolated particle potential cannot be defined so you cannot define potential for any isolated particle whether it's a mass or it's a charge so for isolated we don't define yeah so now the question is what is this uh, the word configuration so configuration refers to the meaning like a relative geometrical arrangement okay it's a relative geometrical arrangement we call configuration so now the question is uh, why we define this particular way so let's take some uh, very common example let's say we have something called uh, a planet earth i hope you know this and uh, the earth is being uh, you know so we have something called the moon left in the color of moon and all and the moon is uh, a bright object so for you it's the earth and moon but for uh, 
a physicist. This is called configuration. So you can see that moon and earth is separated by some value. Now this defines the geometrical reality. Now, even though the moon moves around in, in its orbit, which roughly takes 27 days, which roughly defines the two foot night, which roughly defines the okay, two segment of that definition. So that's defined the lunar calendar. Okay. So most of the Asian country follows the lunar calendar, which is associated with the motion of moon around the earth. So how this is how we define the months. That's why if we take 27 days, um, we're not concerned, 28 days as one month, in one year we'll have 13 months, which is exactly in the as per the Hindu calendar. So the lunar motion. Now what I'm saying is that although the moon is moving in a circular orbit, if I make the orbit a circular orbit, R will never change. So now in space, both position of moon will define the same geometrical arrangement. So geometrically, this is same as this. I mean, there's no nothing is special about this point and this location. So the configuration of earth and moon in this particular scenario, we can say is constant. And therefore it must be define a unique potential. So when a moon is moving around the earth, the potential must be unique. We cannot have multiple potential because there is a unique configuration. So now look at this situation and try to understand the concept. So let's say this is uh, sun. And again, we have an orbit. But this case, the orbit is Earth. So Earth itself is orbiting the sun. As you know, Earth always orbit around the sun. Okay. In that case, let's make Earth as a brighter object. So now this Earth is moving around the sun in an elliptical orbit. So now I have changed the orbit shape. It is from circular to elliptical. Okay. And if I call it R. So what do you think that uh, as the earth will move in its orbit, the R will remain same or uh, will change? Change. It will change. And I think that that's a common sense. It must change, right? So can we call uh, the configuration here same or uh, configuration is changing or uh, changing rapidly? So this is the case in which the configuration is not a constant quantity. Now you can realize that the configuration is changing continuously. Therefore, we must say that potential here is variable. Now the word configuration is very important. I mean, we generally ignore this word. And that's why when you solve numerical, you face difficulty, you don't realize that what to do. So let's say if I want to have a if I have a satellite, you know, moving in a, an orbit, and uh, if I want to shift the orbit of satellite, basically I'm trying to say that shift the orbit means change the configuration. So it must have a new potential. So these two configurations cannot have same. Thing, so they must have different potential. So this configuration is very essential, crucial. Word. Let's say you are solving a question in which uh, at the vertex of an equilateral triangle we have three charges. Let's say all charges are equal in mass and equal in value charge, all are positive. So they will repel each other. So after some time, because of symmetricity, it will be on a bigger triangle, the same charge. So it is a new configuration. So we must think of potential. So potential is associated with configuration of something. And the change of configuration will make sure that potential has changed. And those changes generally we need to calculate while solving the numerical. So again, the idea is important, how you think about it. You, if you stick yourself to MGH and if that is your life, then probably half of physics is gone from your life. So the idea of configuration is very crucial to understand the potential and that will eventually help you in actually mastering 
एट्टी परसेंट कॉन्सेप्ट फिजिक्स में पोटेंशियल इज फिजिक्स सो वेन आई टॉक अबाउट एनर्जी आई टॉक अबाउट मोस्टली पोटेंशियल आई कैन कीप ऑन डिस्कशन पोटेंशियल टू टू थ्री लेक्चर्स इट्स सच ए वर्सिटाइल टॉप एनी so now coming to this uh, configuration part so now we have realized something configuration is the arrangement of system of particles in which the particles are interacting so like here we have a particles means it can be body also system means anything so here the sun is a body earth is a body they are interacting they are attracting there is a potential the same thing is moon and the earth attraction potential now the assumption of circular orbit is having the very fundamental meaning that the potential or the configuration is essentially same so no matter where you move the potential never changes okay so potential is a constant quantity and uh, also we will learn in the orbit that kinetic energy is also constant so essentially the moving in an orbit called circular orbit will make sure that that your kinetic is constant separately your potential is constant separately and the, of course because each term is constant individually so the sum must be constant in case of elliptical orbit which is the most case of the gravitation chapter in case of elliptical orbit since potential is changing continuously so the kinetic so here the individual configuration i mean individual constant we cannot talk about so we cannot say that kinetic energy is constant potential is constant we cannot talk about but the sum will be constant because that's the conservation of energy so when you are solving the question of uh, gravitation and especially the elliptical uh, the elliptical orbit so if you are solving question of gravitation in which the orbit is known to be elliptical or not circular of course then the conservation law will tell you that add potential with kinetic then only conservation will follow so you cannot only conserve potential you cannot conserve only kinetic that's a problem so these differences are very important okay so now this is the potential it is the energy possessed by any system by virtue of its configuration now potential energy is configuration but the numerical value of this configuration no one knows like i don't know how much god has worked in the past to create this beautiful configuration because someone must have created when the idea is like i don't know so the absolute potential i cannot define because i have no idea that what what happened in the past to make that configuration from scratch so let's say the if i say god is the ultimate one to create this beautiful structure but god never gave the estimate that the money which he spent and there is no lesser which is you know saved in the universe which you can go and check oh this guy spent money so that's why the problem is if we talk about the natural configuration in space or in nature so the configuration energy is not known to us and that is why when we try to define the potential we only define the change in potential the absolute value we are not in us you can say in a capacity to define so the absolute definition of potential energy having no mathematical formulation so potential as a concept you can understand but when it comes to the mathematical formulation there is no formula meant for potential so now every formula which you have learned so far in your life about potential energy formula that is a formula which actually talks about the change in potential now the problem is the formula which you have taken for granted as a potential is basically the formula of change in potential so we'll come to that what i mean by saying this so the idea is simple so the point why that matter absolute value of potential energy can not be defined only i mean of course i'm saying mathematical what i mean to say is mathematical 
only change in potential can be defined. Uh, can you tell me what is the time now? What so is the what? time? Time. What is the time? Time. Time. Nine twenty seven. Okay. But what I asked was very deep. You cannot define time. What is now? What is the time right now? If you the remember time the time interval can be de uh, defined. But if I say if the beginning of the universe from the all scientific measures is Big Bang, since Big Bang till now, I have no idea about the time. So the absolute time we cannot measure. It is exactly the same as potential. Let's say if I tell you go and measure the amount of water in an ocean. You cannot do that. You cannot do that. What is the water in the ocean. But you do one thing. You take a bucket and go to the Suju Chopati. You dip the bucket in the I mean, ocean and you pull bucket out of the I mean, ocean. So now at that particular instant, you can say that I don't know what is the water in the ocean, neither before nor afterwards. But I know that the water is less by one bucket. Now that's the idea. The change can be talked about, but we cannot talk about the absolute value before and after. And exactly the change happens due to the work. That's why I say it's a mechanical energy. So the amount of work is actually related to the change in potential energy of system directly. So that's some relation is there. And that is what we have to study. So we cannot talk about what is the potential before and what is the potential after. It's just like measuring time or measuring the water in the ocean or measuring the like uh, the sand in the desert and the stars in the sky and so on. We know it's there. So that's the truth. But how much? That's beyond the scope of our, our imagination. But we can do one thing. If I detonate one star using some H-bomb. That's the smallest star in the universe. I, I pick one small star in the universe. I, I did detonate. I know that in the entire universe now, the number of stars is one less because of my action. So my action is known in advance. So the change in potential is something which we always able to calculate. So our ability is to make this change in potential. We cannot make the, uh, calculate the absolute potential. Understood. So that is very, very important. So what we say is the change in potential energy. Now that's the most fundamental definition of physics. And this definition we don't prove. We just, I'll give you some examples to remember, but this is the most, the fundamental formula in physics. And this is the formula behind almost entire chapter of physics. So irrespective of the chapter name which you study, this will never change. And that's the most fundamental. So what we say the change in potential energy is defined as negative of work done by the system. Now that's the most, the most fundamental point. The other way of thinking is better. That working by system is real time. Now this is a easier way to remember why. Why this is better? Because we have already learned that work requires energy. So you need some energy to do work. And every system with some configuration will have energy. So when a system is doing work, it means it is consuming some energy. So the only energy which you can consume is what you have stored in the past, which you don't know. So we can say that the loss in potential energy, that's where the minus sign is coming. 
so when a system will do the work it will consume its saved value its stored value so delta u is going to be negative because that's going to be lesser now so the when system do does the work it will use its own energy which was stored earlier and therefore any loss in self energy stored is equivalent of work done by the system because system cannot bring or produce energy from elsewhere so it will do work at the expense of the energy which it had stored okay so now you can think this way let's say you drop a ball on the earth surface so you must have observed that the ball accelerate or you can say it speeds up while coming down so because the ball is coming down and it is speeding up you can understand that the kinetic energy of the ball and the earth is growing in value of course by standing on the earth you cannot see earth moving and that's in, that's a fact that earth will move almost negligibly but in essence theoretically both moves okay because of the earth mass is much bigger than the mass of the ball then eventually motion that will happen even from the outer space is ball motion so okay we'll stick to the ball only so when the ball is moving and it is becoming faster and faster what you don't realize there is a constant change in configuration because the ball is coming closer to the earth so the separation is changing continuously in fact it is decreasing and therefore the potential is changing very rapidly now the increase in kinetic is basically due to the fact that the potential has decreased a lot because the configuration is changing continuously so for you it may be a ball dropping to the earth but for me it's the the earth and the ball coming closer that's the idea and because they are coming closer so I, for me it's like the separation is decreasing so for me its configuration is changing so can you see the configuration part in every activity like i gave you one example but i hope you can think about configuration anywhere so the idea is whenever there is a change of configuration potential will change so when the ball is coming towards the earth there is a continuous change of configuration and so the potential and it is the loss of that potential which is actually nothing but the work done by gravity we call it and that work actually goes to the ball as kinetic energy because that's the work in theorem work done by force to shoot changing kinetic energy so now I'll try to look at the correlation like how we can relate system is doing work at the expense of the energy it had stored and now that energy stored we are calling potential because we don't know how what to say we have to say something so we call it potential and then we reduce that potential energy the so called potential energy to do this work because the definition of energy says that energy is the capacity of doing work so every work which you perform will consume energy so there must be some source and if you do not have if you do not have the direct source of energy you consume your own stored energy which is somewhere given as a extra energy by the god I and mean, this is you can think of so the system cannot do work from its i mean out of nowhere so system is doing work because system is having energy somewhere stored and that's energy equal potential so the loss in potential is definitely the work done by system i think this definition is the most fundamental and most intuitive definition in physics okay so how to change this formula in different scenarios so let's say you talk about the two masses so you will say work done by the gravity is minus delta u we talk about two charges work done by coulombic forces equals to minus delta u and then you talk about the elastic potential and then you can say work done by the spring is minus delta u and now that will be the very close to the formula of potential and energy of spring so if i just use this formula for spring part you can say spring the spring force is the internal force system force so the work done by spring itself is and we know that when you deform a spring from natural to deformed state the work done by spring is minus half the x so 
during the deformation the potential will grow by value so you can see the answer is first which means any act of deformation any act of deformation will increase the potential energy of spring any act of deformation and deformation means either compression or elongation both so any act of deformation will increase the potential and now this is not only for a spring let's go back to the childhood example if you play with bow and arrow if you pull the string of the bow that is an act of deformation and what it will do it will store energy in the string that's also spring energy so you if you play guitar you pluck the string that is an act of deformation because you pull the string sideways that's called plucking so what you do you store the potential energy okay you play tabla dholak percussion instrument there is a membrane which is a stretched membrane you press it you deform an act of deformation what is store potential energy there is a transverse wave moving in a string a wave is a flow of energy and during the flow it carries energy and momentum both and what it does it deforms the medium let's say string an act of deformation there is a potential energy i am saying something i i mean throw the air out of my mouth i create compression an act of deformation there is a potential energy so any act of deformation will always create potential because basically what we took more to the change of configuration so now i have tried to relate variety of things at once I and mean, you can see there is no chapter without potential so the chapter called wave and sound is again having potential concept and the definition is pretty much same okay so now you can see that the delta u is positive which means an act of of a deformation will always result into increment of potential so when you try to deform it okay and now if you try to relate i mean or understand closely that anything which goes against the nature will increase the potential now if i drop a ball will it go up or down if i'm audible you can answer if you drop a ball will it go down or up down down so now going down is against the nature or as per nature as per nature correct now in nature what happens as per nature the potential will decrease or increase sorry increase whatever happens as per nature potential will minimize reduce decrease because nature wants to minimize energy that's the nature of nature okay that's too much for us so the lowering the potential is the natural choice of any system so when you will study the surface tension the surface is having energy called surface potential energy or simply surface energy we call it and because in order to minimize the surface energy it will shrink the surface and that's what it creates the surface tension you now that's again nature of nature so what is the natural flow of you know things in nature it's a, every system will tend to minimize the energy and therefore any act which support it will decrease the potential or any act which will increase it will increase the potential so for example if you have two charges plus and minus if they are coming closer what do you think potential will increase or decrease sir decrease exactly 
so that is why when the electron is in the higher energy state or excitation state it will go back to the lower excitation state because the nucleus and electron will attract each other so coming closer to the nucleus is the natural choice because it will reduce the potential energy. so if you want to try to take the electron away from the nucleus it's against the nature so you need to impart energy you need to give energy so you give energy to excite and then you give much more energy to ionize understood yes sir so anything which happens against the nature will increase the potential an act of going against the nature will increase the potential and any act which supports the nature's philosophy of thing uh, it will decrease the potential of system of given configuration now that is the basic crucial thinking point about any question so let's say if we want to bring two positive charges closer what do you think the potential will grow or decrease grow exactly because the coming bringing closer to positive charge is not as per nature because they repel that's their natural philosophy so repulsion is natural you're trying to bring it closer which is against the repulsion and therefore the potential must increase so let's say you're trying to solve a question of thermodynamics in which we have a piston cylinder and gas filled inside the piston now if i press the piston the gas will get compressed what do you think the gas will support it or will oppose it what do you think the gas will support oppose. or oppose exactly the gas will oppose so compressing the piston demands work from external or the system will do the work so that is not natural right so when you try to press the piston you need to do the work the atmosphere will do the, do the work and that is why the work will be the way to supply energy to the system so we have a work transfer taking place from surrounding to the gas through the piston so in various chapter you will realize that potential is having different way of interpreting in fact most question of thermodynamics you can solve by common sense i mean there is no need to even mug up the formula of first law of thermodynamics i have never done this in my life in fact uh, when i started learning chapter of uh, work energy power if i remember correctly i was not knowing what is work energy power i was not knowing what is what what is potential energy in fact the only sense which i developed as a child was the energy and i realized that energy is going this way and that way and what i used to do is i used to take the plus minus sign as per my own intuition and every time i solved the question i got the correct answer and by just this simple intuition of energy flow i was able to solve all question of erodov without any teacher self help just on my own no nothing nothing was required it's like a nat nature score like i was able to understand what nature is trying to explain through this question not in that way the nature's flow so the idea is if you really understand energy and its flow you can almost solve 50% of physics with ease the biggest problem that every student faces is that they still believe that there are chapters that i they need to mug up the formula the, the it's other way around in physics there is no chapter just concepts and just few concepts not even much so there are hardly five and six concepts which can solve any question of physics but of course to relate and then go back to from the concept to the formula that requires effort so now here we got one formula right? in a, the potential energy of spring which is and so far what we have got is delta u not even the potential energy so now the change in potential we have the formula half the expert so the obvious question is if the formula for change is this much then what is the formula of potential energy so here comes the concept of reference so 
what is the concept of reference so what we have done is whatever god has done i mean god might have invested some money to make that configuration so what we are doing is we have taken the god's configuration as something with zero potential because the only thing we are interested is in the change so let's say there is some configuration and uh, in a different situation we have taken a certain configuration as zero potential energy configuration so for example even though the spring is in its natural length let's think about a spring so the spring is in its natural length now can we say that potential your energy of the spring is zero the answer is in a way no the absolute potential energy cannot be zero but now we are learning a chapter we need to be some have methods to solve even in the natural length the potential energy of a spring is not zero rather we call it minimum now as a concept of reference we choose the mean or we choose the natural length as the reference and therefore we assign the reference potential as z now this is the assignment so now, now there are two things which one is more accurate is the potential energy stored in the spring in natural position is zero or is it minimum which one is better minimum correct it is minimum which is the minimum now saying it is zero is basically incorrect so now we define a concept of reference now delta is what the potential at deformation x minus potential at uh, no deformation and this is the formula half k now this is always true this is always true now by assigning the reference as zero by calling this as zero now we have derived a formula ux equals to half k which says that if i spring is in the de deformed state and if the amount of deformation is x then it must have the energy stored half the x square basically this is the energy above the natural position so i have no idea what is the energy in the spring at natural position i have no idea no but i have idea what is the amount of work required to change the configuration and that i can associate with the potential then i can say this work will get stored in system as a potential because my work is not lost my work is not dissipated so it must be somewhere now somewhere we call potential okay so the inability to define energy leads to the definition of potential that's how we think about okay so that's why i said the only thing that we should be concerned about is work the potential energy will come automatically okay so now let's come to now this is the potential energy of a spring so any spring in a deformed state with amount of deformation x will have energy stored half k x okay So now the most important part is called gravitational potential. So before we start this gravitational potential, let's just take a relook at something called Newton's law of gravitation. And I hope you have learned it class nine. So if we have two point masses, let's call m one and two, and at a separation r. So, so the gravitational force between the two masses is given by where r is the distance from the center of the m1 to center of m2. We take distance from center to center. For point mass, uh, it's a distance. For a spherical object, we take center to center. 
So now if we have a earth and imagine this is the ball. Just to break the monotonous, I'm putting the ball here. So now the separation we take from center to center, but ball is having almost zero dimension. So the radius of the earth is the only dimension that we can think of. So if I call this as RE, the distance of the first mass to earth is here and the distance of the second mass is here. But of course, the ball size is negligible compared to earth size. So we can just say RE as a distance. So this is, this is equivalent of uh, two masses, earth mass and the ball mass. At a separation r, and so the gravitational force will be how much? G, m m by r square. And therefore, if you release the ball slightly above the earth surface, slightly above this, then what is the axis in it will produce? The axis will be force upon mass. So the axis in produced by the gravity. In the frame of earth, you can see the axis of the ball. So the axis of the ball will be a by m, and this will be exactly equal to g m by m. So this is called axis due to gravity, and we have a very nice symbol for that. We call g. So we call g as the axis due to gravity, and the formula is g m by r. So this formula is very important for you. So now we are trying to define the potential. So let's say I'm trying to define potential energy of earth and ball. This is earth. So we define something called infinity. Now infinity is a concept. It means the ball is so far that practically there is no interaction between the ball and the earth. So if I keep the ball here, then I can vouch or claim that they are not interacting. So not interacting is a way of saying that there is no potential energy. So the potential energy associated with the system of earth and the ball at infinite separation is equal zero. Now that's again reference. So hypothetically, we assume a reference at infinity, which will make sure that there is no interaction which will make sure that there is no potential energy. Okay. Because potential energy is essentially the interaction and a lack of interaction is the lack of potential energy for sure. Okay. Now this idea is very important in the ideal gas, I mean, uh, KTG, kinetic theory of gases. In KTG, what you learn is called ideal gas. Now the gas is said to be ideal if they do not interact. Which is the other way of saying that they don't have potential energy. Which is the other way of saying that the only energy that they can have is kinetic energy. That is another way of saying that the internal energy of any ideal gas is nothing but its kinetic energy. So that becomes the du of the first law of thermodynamics. So when you talk about the du, the internal energy, what you talk about is basically kinetic energy of gases molecules, that's it. So the kinetic energy of gases molecule in case of ideal gas is called internal energy because the potential part we exclude. Why? Because we are stating as a postulate of KTG that they do not interact except during collision except while they hit each other, they do not interact. Now that's the a key sentence. They do not interact, which completely nullifies the concept of potential. So now you know that when you talk about the internal energy, you talk about the kinetic energy. That's the idea. In the, the ideal gas, you will learn in the chemistry, KTG, the kinetic theory of gases. If you read one of the postures, it's clearly written there in the postulate. Postulate means assumption. Okay. So now 
by defining the reference at infinity we say that because they are not interacting let's call that no interaction situation as zero potential energy no even at infinite separation the god must have done something to create earth at least and to create ball so in fact there is a energy associated with the earth itself ball itself because earth itself is a collection of points so that's again itself a configuration which god created and since we do not want to take talk about individual configuration so we never talk about the energy associated with the earth itself ball itself because that is not the energy of interaction but in chapter of gravitation we will in fact prove it and derive it something called self energy like the energy which is due to the interaction of the particles of the earth itself we call self energy of the earth and in fact there is a formula for that self energy is basically minus 3 by 5 it means to create earth I means this is a, a valid assumption to create earth this much energy was extracted from earth so to destroy the earth you must supply this much energy so any like process which can supply this much energy to the earth will separate the earth into particles now this energy is just beyond your imagination Because the mass of Earth is 10 power 27 and 24 kilogram, the squaring means 10 power 28 and 48 and then minus 11 you can take. This is it is huge value of energy, and no atomic explosion, no H bomb can create this much energy. So maybe you need uh, some quadrillion, trillion, 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 trillion. energy to do this i cannot express in words so now these are formulas so now when we talk about the potential energy we ignore the the god effort in creating those even atoms I mean, the effort of creating the ball effort of creating this earth we never talk about those energy so we only talk about the energy of interaction and the potential energy in our sense is interaction energy so will restrict our idea to interaction now will not go beyond that okay so right now what i'm saying is there is there is no potential although this is incorrect statement i mean saying that there is no potential itself is wrong but that is how we learn physics that's how we you know create the idea of physics so now you what you need to understand is that a lack of interaction will result into no potential energy so this is zero potential so right now the earth and the ball is having zero potential and now you may be interested you may be interested to bring this ball somewhere so let's say i'm trying to bring ball near the earth surface or maybe somewhere there, not exactly close Okay. Let let's take somewhere else. I just want to change the. What is that? Okay. Yes. Yeah. So now I have brought the ball here. You can see that. I can choose any path to bring the ball, but uh, okay, that will not be convenient to you in terms of thinking. So what I'll do is I'll do something else. Take a straight path. I mean that's better than going straight because the work we can only do from a uh, well defined path. Now because you will learn later on that uh, what you learn later on that uh, the gravitational force is conservative force. So the work really does not depend on path. So if you are arriving here. by any path like this or like this or maybe like this all will give you the same energy so we are choosing something which in which we can do the calculation because anyway if every path is like equally likely path and uh, it will not change the answer so let's take a path in which we can write the laws of motion so now the idea is 
the gravitational force at which let's say the distance is r it's called the distance here is r so what is the force of uh, attraction acting between the earth and the ball at this instant when the r is a separation so it's easy to write it's a g m m r i hope this is clear okay and now let's say you move dr now because the r we take from away from a uh, center of earth as positive so when you go inside the r will decrease so dr is the negative term so minus dr is positive term okay so now this is the magnitude of displacement minus dr because dr itself is negative you are coming closer so r will decrease so dr is negative so to make it positive we put minus r. now for this elementary displacement what is the work done by system so what is the work done by system what we can say here force into displacement correct that's how we write and then we can write as uh, g m m r squared minus i hope this is okay this is not very difficult we are taking one step at a time so this is how we start solving any question you write a work done by system by writing the force of system into displacement and then you substitute the force formula from the different chapter so let's say in gravitation we replace by newton's law of gravitation in electrostatics the only difference will be what k q1 q2 by r so now see this is the only difference between the the electrostatics and the chapter of gravitation there is no apparent dif difference now if you know how to write this value then after this difference in chapter so if i go to a uh, different chapter i have to just substitute the value accordingly that's the only idea of solving question okay so now let's not make it complicated let's keep it simple tell me if you are really okay with this part it is clear yes. so any doubt in this so far because this is very crucial part i mean i i can't move forward all, unless all of you are comfortable with this writing part and that's the case that if you really want to understand the the potential energy, if you really want to understand what goes behind the potential energy, formulas Yes, I understood. All right. So now, can you do the derivation? So what we'll do next, because we have got the formula. Now only thing is integration. From where to where? Probably so we got the formula. That, no, no. So you are writing the work done by system equals to integration of G capital M M by R square into minus G R. So small R square. And we are taking it from where to where? We are taking it from the infinity to R. So earlier, the, earlier the ball was at infinity. Now it is at R separation from the Earth. That's how we have taken. So work done by system is how much? If you do the integration, I can take G capital M M outside, and what we have left with is uh, minus outside. D R by R is what is the integration? Minus one by R. Now, if you substitute the, it's a very simple formula. Just substitute the limit. So substituting infinity is same like substituting zero. So if you substitute infinity, it means it's zero. One by infinity we take as zero. So minus one by r minus of uh, minus one by infinity, which is zero. It turns out to be the answer as a uh, g m m r. 
Yes. By R. That's it. And the warden is positive. But this is not what we are looking for. What we are looking for? Potential energy formula. So for that, we need not to worry because we know this is the, the fundamental definition of physics, which says that volume by system is minus delta. E. So G M M by R is minus. Delta is final minus initial. So always write final minus initial. But by definition, the U infinity we take as a reference, so this is zero. So the potential energy at separation R we write as minus G M M by R. Now this is the formula of gravitation. In electrostatics, if you write the uh, potential between two charges, the formula is K Q1 Q2 by R. Of course, not minus sign because the sign of charge will decide plus and minus. So if the charge, are, if they attract, we put minus. If they repel, we put plus sign. So the potential energy of two positive charges is positive. Two negative is positive. One positive, one negative is always negative. So once you know the charge sign, you can write the plus or minus answer. Now this is a very similar. You can see the formula is similar. There is no difference. And derivation is also similar. Everything is similar. So now there is something I can tell you. That attraction, you know, if the system is attractive, the potential is, the formula potential, what you'll get in derivation is always negative. And if the system is repulsive, the formula will get is positive. So that's why in electrostatics, we can have positive formula and negative formula. That's why we don't put the sign before. We write only Q2 and then what we say that, you substitute charge with sign so that its nature will be reflected there. So if you put, uh, let's say both charges are positive, so you put something plus, something plus upon R, so this will be plus. If both are negative, it's again plus. If we one plus, one minus, it's minus. One minus, one plus, minus. So the sign will take care by the charge itself, so we don't put charge outside. In case of gravitation, we have attraction, and because the mass will have no sign, so we, put a minus outside. So that means a minus is an indication of attraction. So in a potential energy formula, a minus always reflect attraction. So let's say if I write something, uh, a potential form like A minus B X square. And if I say A and B are positive numbers. So in this formula, this is the repulsion actually. Because this is always positive, so this is also positive. So this second term entirely is negative. This is attraction. So by looking at the formula, you can actually tell which part is put in, uh, due to the attraction and the, what is uh, due to the repulsion. So we have attraction and repulsion. And this is very helpful when we go next, when we study about the conservative and non-conservative forces, just very soon. So now the potential energy, we got the formula, but it's still, we are far away from what we generally do MGH. Okay, so let's go one step closer. So I want to so know what is the potential energy of earth and the ball which is almost touching. Yes, you want to say something? Sir, so from that work in system is equal to minus of delta potential energy. So we can prove the conservation of energy also. No, it is basically consequence of energy conservation. Like energy is conserved, that's why this formula is there. So we'll go in the other way around. Okay, so we'll go next and I'll prove. Okay, so right now I'm saying it, but very soon I'm going to prove it. So this is actually not proved. In fact, this is something which we believe that, okay, the uh, there is no proof of this. We, what we say is that every conservative force, uh, if doing some work, it will do at the expense of its own stored energy. So a system doing work is equivalent of saying that it is consuming its savings 
and so the potential of such system will decrease that's the idea now if you look at the formula it's very simple what is the potential energy now minus g mass of earth mass of ball upon r e that's it let's call it u initial now imagine the ball you throw and it goes somewhere here and now this is at a height h called altitude and uh, this is again r e of course so we talk about the there are, there are some confusing terms for instance there is something called distance there is something called altitude in gravitational come to know the altitude is something which we measure from the surface of planet and the distance is something which we measure from the center of planet and that is a very known fact so when i say that a ball is at a distance of this or if a satellite is at a distance of this distance means from center and for height we talk about the surface so the word height only measure with respect to surface but distance we measure with respect to center so that's, uh, that's something which we should know so now what is the final potential energy of system because this is the two different configuration this is a new separation so the final potential energy will be minus g m m upon r e plus h h is called the height or altitude or whatever okay so if the ball is taken from here to certain height h by through any path doesn't matter how much potential you change what is the delta u so the delta u is final mass initial so final mass initial becomes uh, i will just change the sign this minus this will minus will become plus so i'm just writing the one step ahead finally is this initially is actually different so i hope this is okay and now write a 1 by r e minus 1 by r e plus h and then you can write as uh, h upon r e into r e plus h you can take lcm and then you can further write as a g capital m small m h upon r e square 1 plus h upon r just for that and i have given you the formula that this is nothing but the small g g so because g we can write as g m by r is called because the gravitational attraction near the surface close to the surface we can write m g h plus 1 now this formula is always true. there is no ambiguity there is no approximation but we are interested in writing the potential energy near the earth surface so if h is very very smaller than earth radius let's say you take to 10 meter 20 meter 200 meter 1 km but if h is very very small compared to the earth surface, uh, earth radius which is 6400 km in all such case h by r e will be very very small than one and therefore this formula will become equals to mgh oh it means if you take a object from earth surface to certain height h and if the h is very small compared to the earth radius the potential will increase by mgh now that's the increment value so now the biggest question comes now comes the biggest question this mgh is the potential energy of ball earth or earth ball system earth ball system that's a very important result because normally we think that it's a potential energy of ball no when you take a ball to a height h even on the earth surface the potential energy is never defined for one it is defined for the system as a whole because it is the energy of interaction so it does not belongs to one particular object okay so what do we say now this is very crucial point we must mention this category here okay so 
So in the formula in which you just obtained MGH for the situation when H is very, very is smaller than RE, this MGH represents potential energy of earth ball system. And now the bigger question we may ask that where this energy resides? Where is this energy? Like where we can go and find this energy? And the answer is we cannot find the location of potential energy. Potential energy is the property of space and no one knows where it is. It is the most mystery, mystery, you can say, uh, mystical force, you can say, mysterious force, uh, mysterious form of energy. Like till date, no scientist knows what is potential energy. So although we define, we formulate, we write, we solve question, but the fact is till date, no one has claimed that they know potential. So in a very famous book by the Nobel laureate Richard Feynman, he said that, I don't know what is potential. I mean, I don't know where it is and I won't be able to write ever what is potential. And so writes the Griffith, David J. Griffith. So potential is still a mysterious fact. I mean, something part of mystery. Say, if you look at my rationality, what I am doing is I am creating a hypothetical logic to God. Because I have no option to define. So right now, the only way I can justify my claim is through the example of God. Because when I say God, you will not I mean, ask for this. I know. Because that's your rationality. The idea is there is no absolute way to define something in the nature. So when we have, when we are like kind of handicapped of uh, our own logic, we resort to the concept of God. So that's what we I am doing here also. Okay. So now potential energy is something which we don't know. Right? It's just uh, something hypothetically we didn't define. But when it comes to the definition and formula in physics, this is how you can proceed. Okay. Now this process of deriving the formula is exactly same in all chapter of physics. And what is the process? What is the algorithm? You define the force by system, define the elementary work by system, integrate, that will give you delta u, take a reference, define u. And that's the algorithm. So what is step one? You first define the system. Define the force of interaction, define the elementary work, define the delta u, take one point as a reference, which is some natural choice, and then define the potential. And if you really understand this part, then I will say that you have really learned the concept of potential. Else, you are far, far away from potential. You just know a few bunch of formula and you're happy. So if you think that you have really understood the potential, you should be able to derive anything. Okay. So now there is a definition number two, which is equally important. I mean, method definition. So we say that the change in potential energy is defined as work done by external with condition of life. Now you can see that the force here is not system force, rather external force, like force which I apply. And then I'm equating with the delta U, and then I'm putting a star which says condition of force. Just like a marketing diet. So now what is the meaning of star here? So it says that the above formula is true if change of 
configuration occurs slowly now slowly is a very deep meaning word in physics so here slowly is a very scientific meaning so slowly means you change the configuration apparently without moving anything which means you move at such a slow rate that nothing looks moving okay. so for example let's say if you go from one room of your apartment to another room in one year apparently you never moved actually but still you moved i mean that's logical thing to understand so when you change the configuration slowly or slow enough which means the system was always in equilibrium that's the idea of slowly that is the system move under equilibrium condition always so such process in physics which is very essential in thermodynamics called quasi static process which means it is almost static it is as good as static but not static so that's why the word quasi is a prefix which means something close to that which uh, you know I mean imitates as if it is static so let's say if i say you are a quasi intellectual it means you are you like in, in fact uh, uh, manifest yourself as intellectual but you are not in true sense so you can put a prefix quasi in any situation and then you can uh, play with the vocabulary so you can play quasi static quasi uh, honest and quasi this quasi that you can create your own vocabulary but this is a really important concept in uh, thermodynamics that every thermodynamic process must be quasi static if we want to apply the the formula of thermodynamics let's say if you want to write a, uh, dq equals to du plus dw at every elementary step then that is only true if the process is quasi static so the process uh, which are quasi static we apply the the rules of equilibrium the process which are not quasi static we apply the energy rule energy conservation from beginning and end so when laws of motion is varied and when laws of motion is not varied that's the condition actually when when to write laws of motion when not varied. so quasi static is the equilibrium condition so we use the word slowly in physics to reflect the same essence and i i can go back and derive the same formula with this assumption only sign will change and eventually the final answer will be the same so the final answer will not change and now you may try this at home i mean the same derivation using this definition but this definition says that you have to move it to keep the system always at equilibrium so you have to move also and you have to also make sure that the system is at the equilibrium and the definition is not only from infinity to certain point you can go backward also so let's say you can also define potential energy while going this way in that case the final will be infinity would be dr like this so by changing the direction of movement this will change and the final answer again will be when you get is same so there is not one way of defining so potential energy can be defined in four ways so just let me just put the all the four ways of the function so we take some reference so reference may be anything infinity what and we take some point p so we can go this way you can go this way this is two ways of finding so when you go from reference if it, the reference is infinity and if you go somewhere here the dr is negative because we take r from to p and this way dr is plus okay this is how we think about if a uh, reference is zero like origin then going away 
positive and going towards So this is how we define the plus and minus of dr. So if the reference is at origin, so going away from reference is positive and towards is negative. If the reference is at infinity, so going towards infinity is plus and going away from infinity is minus. That's how we define it. And then you can define either using this formula or using the previous formula, it's up to you. Okay, so I'll not go further deeper into this. So we have a formula of potential energy. So we have two formula, the MGH part and the half kx square part, that is sufficient. Okay. So we'll see the rest of the formula, of course, in the next lecture. So the next lecture will be mostly problem solving. So we'll do question solving and how to apply this concept in variety of situation. But I think with today's lecture, you must have got some uh, significant idea about uh, how things work in physics as a whole. So we have discussed from a wide uh, array of topics pertaining to different chapters. And uh, uh, now some intuition I expect you will be able to develop. And now you will not solve questions blindly. So now you know what you are doing. Okay. So that the idea must prevail what you're doing. So today we did uh, no numerical, so don't worry about it. We'll do in the next lecture. This, this lecture was very important. And I think those who have attended to today's lecture, I mean, your 80% effort in physics will reduce by after today's lecture, if you have really understood. And you will realize later on that your ability to solve numerical will increase exponentially if you really understand this today's lecture. So all the rest will see in the next lecture. And I hope that okay, okay, we may meet before uh, Diwali. So, in case if you don't meet, I wish you all a very happy Diwali. Bye and take care.